Hello, and welcome to the Empowered Curiosity podcast, and also welcome to spring if you are in the northern hemisphere here. We are just about to hit the spring equinox, and spring equinox is the perfect time to be looking at new beginnings, to be planting seeds, to be rooting down into the intentions that you created during the more yin part of the year, which is the autumn and the winter. And this is where we start feeling a little bit of like a momentum and a push to create, to find action in alignment with intention. And so I've asked my dear bestie and colleague, Christina Ciccone onto the podcast today and I'm so grateful that she is just as nerdy about the five elements as I am because we did an entire series last year about the five elements and each of the emotions that come up with the five elements and we're going to do something similar this year except this time we're going to take the perspective of looking at the five elements from the perspective of a spiritual entrepreneurship or a business and Since we are talking about intentions in this episode, I thought it would also be a good opportunity in this intro here to root into the intentions of where Empowered Curiosity is starting to expand and grow into. So if you've been a follower or a listener of this podcast for a little while now, you know that I've been so passionate about sharing wisdom around trauma healing work, around nervous system regulation, and about conscious relationships. And it might seem like an odd step forward to be moving into the business and entrepreneurial world, but to me, it not only made logical sense, but it was a complete fuck yes from my body. And the reason why is because I think that trauma work, nervous system regulation, and conscious relationship building, there's not enough of that in the entrepreneurial space. And so specifically, I'm trying to invite in folks who are helping professionals, folks who have a service-based artist type industry. And because we are holding so much magic and medicine in our bodies, in our stories, in who we are. And yet it is so hard to show up authentically in a way that you are marketing from your clear values. You are taking up as much space as this magic and as this medicine is asking you to take up. And when there's a block, when there's a feeling of, I don't feel safe to do that, then I know that there's an activated nervous system and there's a there's some story around trauma around it and it's preventing you from actually connecting and building conscious relationships. So this is why in Empowered Curiosity, I'm now starting to put out some more offers around spiritual entrepreneurship and understanding what it is that may be emotionally, traumatically, or morally blocking you from showing up and allowing that magic and that medicine to flow forward in your life and be shared with the community. So this is exactly why I think that this is the next best step for Empowered Curiosity, and I hope that you will continue to join me on this journey Um, I think that even if you aren't a spiritual entrepreneur, there is going to be enough talk about trauma work and um, nervous system regulation and conscious relationship building that it will still be applicable. But moving forward, there is going to be a slight bend towards the entrepreneurial space. So, of course, there is always full sovereignty and saying yes to this community or no. And if you say yes, I am so wholeheartedly grateful that you are here. And if it is a sovereign no, that is completely okay too. I hope that you um, have gained some value in the time that you've spent in this circle, in this intimate little space on the internet um, with me. So with all of that, let's move forward. I want to just give you a bit of an overview of what we're going to talk about on this episode. So um, 
This episode is specifically for those of you who are at the beginning of your journey of entrepreneurship or you're stepping into a new phase of your business and you want to move forward with intentionality. This is the energetics of springtime. This is the energetics of wood and it helps us keep that uprightness, that um, sense of flowing with your values while also being flexible enough to weather the storms. In this episode, Christina and I um, share a lot about the energetics of growth and beginnings associated with the wood element in the spring season. We also talk about viewing your business as a conduit for energetic exchange. I have been completely immersed in nerding out about the yin and yang energies these days. Um, It's just naturally the, the lens that I look at because of my Taoist background, but I've just been going back to those foundations. And so I share a lot of my thoughts around how yin yang balanced energy allows for the expression of your Tao and for your purpose to come through. And we also talk about the emotion of spring, which is frustration and anger, and how that can come from not accepting the phase that you are in with your business. We also talk about how to access authenticity by harnessing the stillness of yin and using that stillness of yin to manifest through the movement of yang. There's a there's a really beautiful part of the conversation where really we dive into the energetics behind um, yin yang, masculine fem- feminine energy, um, and we really help clarify what that means because um, I think that that can get really muddy and confusing at times. Um, we also go into the archetypal organs of the liver and the gallbladder, and we talk about how those two organs in particular help you envision your path and create movement towards your future. I have a bit of a correction that I want to make, which is I, in this episode, I share that up to 30% of the liver can be removed and it will heal itself as we're talking about that like archetypal energy of the liver. And this is actually incorrect. And I want to make that correction here. You can actually remove up to 80% of the liver and it will regenerate itself, which is just like mind blowing to me, the flexibility of that organ. So I hope that this episode inspires you to embrace intentionality, to embrace movement with intentionality, and I can't wait to see what you all do with this once you are able to harness that energy. And here is my interview with Christina Ciccone. Welcome to the Empowered Curiosity podcast. It's been a little bit of time since we've last had Christina, my dear, dear friend, bestie, colleague, magical unicorn um, (laughs) on this podcast. She has been here several times because we did an entire series last year all about the five element cycles and, um, and how to move our lives in accordance with nature. And this year, she's agreed to do this series again, but this time we are going to just dive in a little bit deeper into the business aspects of entrepreneurship and how we need to be moving in these cyclical patterns in our businesses and in entrepreneurship and how to harness the energy and understand the energetics of each season. So... You get to hear a lot of Christina again this year, which I'm really excited <laughs> about because it really just means I get to have conversations with her and you all get to be a fly on the wall. So, um, and I think that this is a particularly potent time to be talking about springtime with Christina in particular, because she, like me, had over a decade of experience in Chinese medicine. She practiced classical Chinese medicine for 13 years. And she is now shifting and moving into, um, it really is more about like re 
connecting to your designer roots, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So you had done design work before Chinese medicine, and now we're going back and taking all those lessons from Chinese medicine and putting them and overlaying them into this new iteration of your career as a designer. So you're actually at the spring of your business right now, which is mm-hmm. such a lovely time to just connect and, and talk about what springtime and wood energy in business and entrepreneurship, what that means and what that looks like. So that was a long winded intro to just say, hi, I love Christina and she's here hi. and we're going to hang out. <laughs> <laughs> so happy always to hang out with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cyclical is a, is a good theme for, for a, for the seasons and mm-hmm. um, yeah, and my own career, like you say, linear timelines are totally overrated. I mean, things are quite Agreed. quite cyclical. <laughs> but yeah, it's nice to be back. It's nice to start. Um, I think a lot of us are excited for spring, and um, we'll do a little overview um, for anyone who. Um, maybe miss some of the previous episodes a little bit about the five elements in classical and Taoist Chinese medicine and um, just a really brief recap as to what those are, um, how we use them, how you can use them in your own life, and a little bit of what spring in particular, the wood element and springtime, what it has to, to bring for us. So. Yeah. Yeah. Should we start with a little overview? Yeah. And I hope you brought your notebooks because we're just going to be like a fire hose of information um, for this first part. But um, for those of you who want to learn more about just like a general overview sense of what spring and wood energy is like, we did an episode last year during the spring equinox and that was episode 38. And so I'll put the link to that Mm -hmm. in the show notes, but you can go back and listen to episode 38 the wonderful thing about cycles is that, you know, the energetics are relevant this spring, just as it was last spring. So um, take a listen to that. If you are curious about more of a broad view of spring versus a business focused view of spring. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And we talk about these seasons and cycles and elements. Um, There's many, many cultures that follow. I'm probably... I'd be willing to bet every single culture probably has its roots in in following the signs of of nature and mm. seasons, and they're all going to be presented and described in a slightly different way. But at the root, I mean, we're all observing the same types of phenomena, and um, they all have a lot of cross pollination and and similar things to say. And then you and I come from a background in Taoist medicine, which is why we're using that language and um, presenting it this way. But um, I think at the core, Taoist medicine, the Taoist medicine um, holders were really, really obsessed with observing nature and that the natural cycles and looking at it and thinking, what does this tell me? And how can I look at these examples and use that as a guide for being the healthiest, best version of myself, the most functional human. They were obsessed with health and longevity. And so there's all these wonderful cues and coding um, that we that we see in nature that we can pay attention to. Mm-hmm. And I think for us in the modern world, maybe as a reminder to return to sometimes uh, as guidelines for living your best rhythm and of course that's going to take a little individual you know it's going to be as individual as everyone is but there's going to be these broad guides and themes and and just things that happen in nature that all of us can follow that can be helpful Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. um in springtime uh we say the the element that represents spring is the wood element and which is often seen as a tree or maybe a nice flexy piece of bamboo. Uh, And so it brings with it the energetics of growth, expansion. Springtime is, of course, new growth, starting new things, planting seeds that you're going to harvest later. You're really at the beginning of something. And uh, also that growth and expansion, but also hopefully in in a structured way. Like trees have 
they don't just grow willy-nilly. Like there's always a bit of a structure, or if you see a vine or something that doesn't have, it'll lean on something with a structure to, to carve a path. Um, the wood element also is tied to the organ of the eyes in mm -hmm. this medicine. So it's tied to the vision and the visionary and taking the creative spark and then seeing a clear path. Okay, what actions can I lay down to move forward? And I think one of the keys of understanding those aspects of springtime and wood energy is knowing also what, pre what elements precede it and follow it. But preceding spring, of course, we have winter time, which is a very internal, reflective, contemplative, primordial pool of collective information. It's very yin, if we're looking at yin-yang theory, yin being the internal and the deep knowledge, and yang being the outer, a little more outer momentum, outward expression, expansion, concrete, making things, taking things from that yin intelligence and making them form-filled and, and physically present in the world we know. So. Um, we're starting to move from uh, winter is the most yin time of year into spring, which is considered quite yang, but it still has some element of yin. Mm -hmm. Summertime would be, it's, you know, the opposite of pure yin would be like quite pure yang. But we're, so we've got this yang energy starting to come forward, but it's still at its beginning stages and its strength is going to be enhanced by not just growth and expansion for growth and expansion's sake, but building upon a phase that hopefully you've had to rest, replenish yourselves with energy, quiet down, be a little more separate from external influences and, and draw from that quiet place of wisdom and creativity. And now it's like, okay, I, I've been inspired. I've got, I've got some things that I've been thinking about. Now, how do I move forward and start to build the structure to make things happen? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Does that make sense? <laughs> it absolutely makes sense. And I want to dive a little bit deeper into the yin-yang theory, um, just because it's been something that I've been writing about a lot lately. And um, it's one of these things that is the most simple and basic concepts of Taoist medicine is based on yin-yang theory, but it is also the hardest thing that I find to try to describe and use words to <laughs> <laughs> like, it just that like the words are so hard to capture. And so, um, for me, when I sit with yin yang energy and I sit with what balanced yin yang energy looks and feels like it's this process of being able to self-actualize because there's a healthy balance of yin and there's a healthy balance of yang. And another way to think about this, and I think that an easier way for a Western audience to connect to this is by calling it masculine and feminine energy. Even if it has no tie to gender, we have to think of it as energetics. And we all have aspects of us that are masculine and we all have aspects of us that are feminine regardless of how we identify and what our bodies are expressing. And when I think about yin and feminine energy, I think about slowing down and rooting in with intention. She's the holder of of memory. She's the holder of like this is what I was born to embody in this lifetime. And then what the masculine energy does is it takes that rooted, grounded intention, that intuition that lives in the body, the wisdom that lives in the body, and it brings it forward into momentum and action. And so when I look at how the world exists around us and, and the places where we are seeing drama and contention and challenges, to me, I, I, I overlay this concept of yin yang onto basically everything that I see because it's just the lens that I, I view the world through. And I can't help but seeing that in the way that business is taught and how business is, um, expressed 
in our capitalist system. We have created this disassociation between the yin yang and the balance between the yin and yang. There's a vulnerability that's open to exploitation. And I think that that's what we're seeing in business nowadays. And so when I talk about entrepreneurship and when we talk about entrepreneurship being a spiritual practice, it's really about getting back down to those core aspects of yin and yang. And when that happens, it's like our Tao, our purpose is able to manifest. Mm -hmm. And I think that the way the analogy that I like to use is the the dance between the egg and the sperm. I think that we used to think that, okay, so the egg just hangs out there and then the sperms like all sort of enter in this like frenetic battle between each other to figure out who's the strongest and who's the best. And that's the one that wins, you know, the, the privilege of being able to, um, uh, to, to be the one who implants the egg. And really now what we know from science is the egg does sit there, but she sits in her seat of power and she's scanning. She's scanning all the sperm and she's feeling into the resonance of which one is the right one for her. And she is the one who allows for that softening and that opening. And that is what allows for the sperm to enter. And from that entering, the sperm is then the catalyst to take the intentionality of the egg and then put it into motion and put it into action. And that's what I think about when I think about how can we manifest our businesses in a way that's in alignment with our Tao. It has to first come from the seat of power of being in our feminine energy that requires us to slow down, that requires us to root into intention. And then we can create actions that are meaningful and purposeful because otherwise it's just, we're running on a treadmill. Like, Mm -hmm. like so many people who work in corporations I've talked to, um, feel this, this sense of does what I do even matter? You know, I'm one part of this cog in this wheel. And does this spreadsheet even matter? Mm -hmm. You know, and yeah, yeah, go ahead. I I think that's um, what you're, it's important to draw attention to. I think what you said, the balanced yin and yang, Mm -hmm. because we always need one is not better than the other. Mm -hmm. Yin is not better than yang. Yang is not better than yin. But when we have too much or one or the other, that's when things get unbalanced uh, and out of control. And, I, you know, we can see that we, we do live in quite a, let's say, you know, yang, masculine energy business world. And you see, for instance, the nature of spring, that growth and expansion just for the sake of it mm-hmm. without being rooted in the wisdom and like that eggs discernment of, yeah. of that mm-hmm. deep place of knowledge and what's going to be healthy for the future mm-hmm. when you when you just disconnect and you have this imbalance where you're not rooted into that then you start you know that's where over expansion comes that's where desecrations of forests happen and you're replacing yeah. them with monocrops that are just you know wiping out everything and are not yeah. you know that's expansion and growth without wisdom yeah and, and productivity and, for productivity's sake and productivity and you can probably see that in your own life too sometimes it's like oh well i gotta meet these deadlines and get this done and there's not built into that cycle or that phase of okay well i can only work for x number of hours a day mm-hmm. and then i'm going to need some rest and then you know we any any place that that is built into your system then that's going to get out of balance and it's it's not going to function very well for very long yeah yeah and this is one of my big criticisms about business coaching nowadays and why i felt like a really like intentional draw into teaching business is because so much of business coaching is just focused on springtime. It's about, you know, here's a sales template. Here's the how to here is like all the things that you have to quote unquote do to build a, a successful business. And while that's all true, we need to also have that balanced with your why. 
We need to understand what your values are. We need to understand what may be actually blocking you. Because if you are feeling blocked and you're feeling like you're going into freeze states um, because your nervous system doesn't feel safe for one reason or another, it doesn't feel safe to show up and ask for what you're worth. It doesn't feel safe to put your face on Instagram. Stop investing in more and more courses and instead like invest in your own wisdom then we enter into these free states and then you know these how-tos just end up becoming more and more overwhelming mm -hmm. and so if we can just sort of turn back the the cycle a little bit and and like you were saying we need to have that rooted energy even with the expansiveness, you know, the, the roots of a tree are just as deep underneath the ground as they are above ground. And we forget that. And, mm -hmm. and so we need that, that concept of rooting down into our own values and ethics and morals before we can go into an expansive phase. And I think that, that that's lost in a lot of business coaching nowadays. Mm -hmm. And we're a very visual culture now, too. And that's a lot of what you see. You see the tree above ground and you don't see the roots. And you see that in people's process as well, too. You see that what we see is often, you know, spring, like you said, people will give you the spring because everyone wants action. They want to feel like they're doing something. But if you aren't sure what your Tao is and your path is and, and what you stand for, then all the action steps and business plan formats in the world are just going to be, they're sort of going to exacerbate things and make things worse. <laughs> like it's yeah. going to be overwhelming. Also, yeah. if, you're, if you're looking forward into, and what we see is the summer of people's process and we're always mm -hmm. seeing the fruits. And I, I think even what you see often presented and people want to say, oh, well, you know, look, you know, I have the, I have the experience. You can count on me. But even when you see, you know, if you're looking on Instagram, if you're in a field and you're looking at someone else in your field, often what you're seeing is their summer and their late summer. And what you haven't seen is all the process and growth and start and steps. And even the, some of their spring, you don't actually witness that people often aren't posting on YouTube and Instagram when they're, it's like, oh, I tried to use this program and I totally had to spend, you know, eight months even figuring out the first steps and I threw all my stuff away or I didn't know how to build that web store or um, I had to go through my own, get through my own trauma blocks to before I could actually get to the point where I was comfortable in my coaching process or I knew how to stop taking a million courses and just realize that I had <laughs> what I need to have. We often don't see that spring and the, the winter and spring phase. It's a little more hidden. And so mm -hmm. um, if we start comparing ourselves to people who are further down the line and thinking that we should be there when we are in our spring or even mm -hmm. in our winter, then that's going to get really frustrating and really disheartening really fast. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, this ahead. is the knowledge that I think that you embody because you, you know, took like a decade long break from design world and the design world has changed completely <laughs> in that decade. Yeah. You know, yeah. like you've told me stories about how long did you spend drawing a carrot the other day? <laughs> like, Six hours yeah. <laughs> uh, in, in a program. I actually know how to draw a carrot, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> but but yeah, for instance, um, you know, I'm learning a drawing program right now called Procreate, which didn't even exist when I was in mm -hmm. design school. Like that's yeah. something new. It's wonderful. It's amazing, but it's new to me. I am in the spring of this phase yeah. of my new career. Yeah. And if I don't accept that I'm in my spring, you know, I have been frustrated when it's just like, oh man, I wish, you know, I know that three de years down the road, I'm going to know where all the brushes are and all the you know nuances of that program and how to format all my files for all the different printing needs. But right now I am in the spring of that process and I need mm -hmm. to recognize that and accept that. I am not three years down the road Yeah, and it's okay to be here. Mm -hmm. And often we forget to the here right now is your life. My career doesn't start when I've figured everything out down yes. there and I have everything to present to you and what you're looking at are my final products and 
you know, all these things I've felt inspired to create and put out into the world. I'm not waiting. If I was waiting for that, then I would miss, I'd miss my entire spring. I'd miss so many seasons and, and the process of our life. And that is your life. It's not just mm -hmm. harvest time. And, and if you just wait for that, you know, you're going to get this what you're hoping for and you're going to, you know, build your business and be like, okay, well then I'll be happy and then I'll feel secure. Yeah. It's like, okay, well you've got this busy practice or business and, oh, but, I, and I made it. I've got a six figure income. I've got a full client wait list of blah, blah, blah. And it's like, but I've got so many emails <laughs> to respond to and I have all these questions and my some, half of my clients are a pain in the ass and the, you know, like there's always going to be something. And that's what I mean. Also cyc cyclical phases versus linear. Like we're never, it, there's never that end point <laughs> really yeah. In, yeah. in your life. Things go through phases. And I think it's just so healthy and so helpful when we learn to, that's why, you know, I feel so inspired to talk about seasons in business with you is because I think it's so I know how beneficial it's been for us to reconnect mm -hmm. with that, that mm -hmm. reflection of, Hey, there's, you know, how do things work in the natural world? That's, that's the world we've been designed for. We're yeah. not separate than that. Yes. And that includes everything in your life, including your business, or I'll say your work. Cause I, I would throw paid and unpaid work in there. Yeah. We spend a lot of time and energy doing anything that qualifies as work, which I see as energy you you put out there to receive resources that, mm -hmm. you know, help, mm -hmm. help you survive, help you thrive. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we spend a lot of time there. And so if we're struggling against the natural rhythm of things or accepting things, then it's going to just be so much more difficult. Mm -hmm. And this brings up, um, something that happened in session the other day with one of my clients and she was feeling so frustrated um, which is the energy of springtime. Um, but she's feeling so frustrated and being like, you know what, like, why isn't my business supporting me fully? Why do I not make six figures yet? Why is it that I can't afford to take vacations yet? You know? And she was just like, like pissed off at her business and sort of talking about her business as a person. And so it sort of inspired me to ask her, you know, like, what is your business like if you were to personalize your business? What does it look like? What what does it feel like? What kind of person is this? And she sat with it for a moment and she was like, Oh, my business is a baby. She's only, I think, two years in. Um, and she's like, My business is a baby, and I'm asking it to put on a suit and tie and go to work. Yeah. And so <laughs> that changed the energetics of how yeah. she wants to interact with her business. Because really, when you're in a spring phase with your business, that's when we're supposed to nurture it and take care of it and love on it and ask it, what do you want to be when you grow up? Mm -hmm. You know, how do you want to be when you grow up? Mm -hmm. um, instead of being like, you have to go out there and make all this money for me. Um, yeah. <laughs> and the more that we can lean into these cycles and accept them, I loved that you mentioned that, um, accept them as they are, the faster you're able to actually move through them. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and so if she were to just stay in that space of resentment and anger towards her business, because it's not making her six figures yet, that phase is going to last so much longer than if she were to actually just transform the energetic around it and say, I love you. How do you want to be nurtured right now? Mm -hmm. That's such a great, such a great example. I love that. And I think it, it illustrates so many things about the energetics of spring so well. And you did mention too, that, um, the, the emotion associated with the wood element can be anger and frustration. And as we mentioned, wood is meant to grow and expand. And when that growth and expansion is blocked or impeded, um, we get really frustrated or we get angry. Um, and I think that can happen a lot in this phase, both by 
like your example, being frustrated or angry because you think that you should be in a phase that you're actually not in and you feel like you want to be further ahead, but you're not actually, okay, no, this is where I'm, where I am. Or, um, again, with that visionary, uh, if you're not rooted in the nourishment that comes from the water element is through winter, if you're not rooted in that, that nourishment from the water of having time to replenish yourself and get your creative spark or get the, the clear vision of where you want your business to grow and also um, grounding yourself into that, that uh, deep knowledge of, of who you are, a sense of worth, even if you're in spring and you're learning things new and you're, you're not very accomplished at things yet, you can still be grounded in that. And I think uh, I see that a lot in business in that taking too many courses, constantly relying on, on experts outside of ourselves. And if <laughs> I've certainly been, you know, guilty of maybe taking a little too, too many school courses than, than I needed. But at some point I recognized that and I just came to this point. It's like, I don't need any more. But I think when you, that again, that not, not nourishing that growth where you, you, you get this frustration of, I want to be here, um, but I don't have that grounding of knowing my skill set or what I need. And so you start grabbing and flailing and looking all, only to the outside of mm-hmm. who can make me a better this, who's going to give me the program that tells me what I need mm-hmm. to know, who's going to do that. And it's like, actually, you're going to do that. And it's great mm-hmm. to lean on, on others and have structure, but that can look really different, you know, feeling grounded in yourself versus grasping at the external to, f- to fill in something that feels incomplete inside. So, yeah. And, and again, I think, that, <laughs> I think that that also brings up this idea of intention again for me, because it's not that you don't ever seek outside teachers and support um, because we are all you know, beginners in, in all sorts of aspects in our lives. And that's a really good time to ask for help. uh Aha, absolutely. But it's this like, why is it for that fancy piece of paper? You know, is it because you think that this is going to be the magic pill that solves all of your problems? Like that, why is an important inquiry to have? And And so then when you choose the courses that you want to take, if you choose the programs that you take, then it comes from this intentionality of this actually fits in line with my Tao. It fits in line with my purpose. And I've been in that situation too, where I've just taken course after course after course after course and not really absorbing and digesting all of it. And I remember even as I was transitioning away from acupuncture and moving more into the coaching and trauma space, I thought about for a half a second about going in and getting my master's in psychology. But I went to an open house. I, you know, read over their syllabus and I was like, there's so much busy work here Mm -hmm. in this system. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. it's just action for action's sake. And I would graduate with a fancy piece of paper when instead, do I want to invest in courses where I'm getting exactly what I need? And so mm-hmm. then I started taking more classes with like Bessel van der Kork and, you know, lots of uh, trauma informed healers in the space. And even though I don't graduate, with a fancy piece of paper, I do graduate with wisdom that I can use right away with my clients. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's much more in line with my Tao than Mm -hmm. going back to school and getting that master's degree. And, Mm -hmm. you know, that's not criticizing anybody who's out there doing that for yourself. But, you know, if it's in line with your own purpose and it's going to open up doors for you in a way that isn't open to you now, then that's perfect for you. But I think always asking yourself why is an important part of that equation instead of just getting on the escalator of this is what I should do next. And this is what is going to escalate me or elevate me to the next level. Um, that, that slowing down and asking why is important. Yeah. And that's the clear vision piece. You, Mm -hmm. you, by the asking why, by the slowing down for a second, that entering that 
brief little bit of winter, then it's like, ah, now I have the vision to execute a plan that's going to build what I actually need. Mm-hmm. And spring, you know, we're, we're, water is very nourishing to wood. It's like, what, what do you need to nourish your, you know, mm-hmm. for anyone listening, what, what do you need to nourish your business? Maybe nourishing your business actually looks like nourishing, the focus is more on nourishing yourself first. Mm-hmm. Maybe like, maybe physical nourishment is the priority that needs to ha- happen so that you can build a sustainable path forward. Maybe, you know, that that why is a great question and, and mm-hmm. checking in with yourself. What do I need right now? What what yeah. what is it that I need? And then having that that clear vision of okay, based on that, these are the pieces that I need right now and it might look different than what someone else needs right now. And this yeah. is this is how we build our our wonderfully individual and unique expressions in, in this world. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And I think I just want to briefly touch on um, for people, uh, spring can also be, it's a time of growth and we know how it's frustrating if you want to be forward, but um, actually a wood deficiency um, that it, inhibition can also look like a bit of timidity and or depression. Um, I've talked to a lot of people lately who no, they want to, I mean, this has been a big couple of years for change in people's mm-hmm. lives, restructuring. And I've spoken with a number of people who are like, okay, I know I want to make a change. I know I want to, I want to move forward, but I just, I feel so scared to do it. Or I, yeah. I feel timid about moving forward and the, the energetics, the emotion of too much water is fear. So if you're mm-hmm. lingering in that winter time, that winter phase where you're over contemplating and maybe you need to get out of your own head a little bit maybe that's when you talk to someone else or or those are the times to reflect and ask you know why am i here what are my blocks to growth what are my fears that are preventing me from taking that leap and that might be a good place to you know find a really aligned business coach or counselor or Mm -hmm. um or just you know if you're having trouble doing that on your own but that's the other energetics we see right now is like, okay, some yeah. people are just rearing to go and some people want to go, but you, and I find it falls into a lot of times those two categories. It's like, okay, mm-hmm. I want to do stuff, but I have a really hard time mm-hmm. getting started, implementing, making something happen in the physical yeah. world. Yeah. And I think that that happens when we don't have a balanced yin is mm-hmm. we have a tendency for our nervous systems to get kicked into fight or freeze when it comes to um, the wood energy. And so fight can look like overdoing, overperforming, fixing all the things, doing all the things in your business without really knowing like the why. But that can also look like shutdown. That can look like, I know I should do this and I feel frozen and blocked in some way. And this is why I think trauma work needs to be a part of this conversation around entrepreneurship is because it's not about, okay, so let's just override your nervous system and, you know, just take one step in front of the other. It's okay. So we need to understand where this freeze response is coming from. Where do you feel that in your body? What physical Mm -hmm. sensations are coming up and how far back does that go? Because oftentimes when I ask that question, it tends to go back to childhood And it tends to go back to these pivotal moments in childhood where freeze was the appropriate response and freeze was the thing that helped you survive and it's not serving you anymore. And so we have to actually help your nervous system feel safe in the forward movement with intention and alignment. Otherwise, you're just going to stay in a free state and you'll take courses and not know what to do with all the information that you're taking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Exactly. And that's why we talk about business as a spiritual practice. Yes. <laughs> we, <'Cause it laughs> do you think you were just going to open a quick store and <laughs> yeah, make your six figure income and, and not to uh, that an emotional <laughs> spiritual investment wasn't going to be part of that, then right. yeah, surprise. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, it's a, and, and that's why as many tools and resources for entrepreneurs without without that overwhelm again you're going to have to sift through and, and decide what's right for you at the, at the time but mm-hmm. um, the the example taking it down to basics too and and the examples of 
what's going on me around it uh, around me right now in nature in where where are we at and in the physical world do i feel more you know how do i feel when it's colder or hotter outside how do i feel when the sun sets at 6 p.m 4 p.m 10 p.m those things are affecting you in the background as well and then where are you at in your uh personal phase of whether it's your business or your life we also have these you know we've got big cycles and we've got micro cycles 24 hour day we we would say that morning is spring noon is summer you've got late afternoon late summer you've got the evening into autumn and then you've got nighttime as being winter and so um it's okay to be in we're in spring right now, but you might be in the summer of your business. You mm -hmm. might be in autumn. You might be winding things down and ready to move on. And that's okay. That's not inappropriate. But recognizing where you're at in, in the context of things, I think, brings some awareness. And then when you bring awareness to that, it might be a little easier to bring awareness to, okay, where, where am I coming from in my personal process? Am yeah. I feeling blocked even though I want to get things done? Am I feeling antsy because I feel like I should be further ahead? And just coming back to to that self-awareness piece and, and um, can be really, really helpful. And then knowing where, okay, I'm sort of at the limit of my resources right now. I could use someone's help is, is totally okay. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to theorize that this idea of where are you in your cycle, you know, you named a lot of like micro cycles and macro cycles. I'm going to argue that that comes from a somatic place more so than from a cognitive place. Because I think that like, as soon as you started talking about all those cycles, I got kicked up into my head sort of energetically. And I was mm. like, oh, where am I in my cycles? And then mm. it's like, no, 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 that's not the place where I need to be. And bringing that energy back down into the body allowed me to like actually access like this is the phase that I'm in and this mm -hmm. is good, you know, mm -hmm. versus like thinking of it at like, because you can talk yourself into and out of like Everything. all sorts of decisions <laughs> and all sorts Anything. of ways to move forward. Right. But your body doesn't lie. Yeah. Your body has so yes. much wisdom. Your yes. body is just, I mean, like the technical word is that you're neuroceptive, which just means mm -hmm. that there's, there's a, an automated sense of safety and not safe. There's an mm -hmm. automated sense of I'm in winter versus I'm in summer. And we can't deny those messages from the body. Um, yeah. And so if listener, as you are hearing Christina speak, if you too got kicked up into your brain, like I did, <laughs> um, just taking a moment to bring that energy back down into your body, because that's where you're going to find those answers. Mm -hmm. And that's why these looking at the natural world guides, which is, you know, the physical world as well, which includes you and your body. Mm -hmm. It's, it can be nice because we, we don't counterintuitively, we don't solve a lot of problems just by thinking our way out of them, or you don't solve a lot of problems from the place of the problem. Mm -hmm. Counter, we want to, we would, because the mind is an incredible tool and there's definitely a time and the place for doing a lot of thinking, doing a lot of ideating. Um, but I'm sure many, if not most entrepreneurs lean towards getting trapped in our upper body and our head because we, we, we rely really heavy, heavily on the tools up here. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's the eyes with vision, it's the brain with sort of functional thinking, mm -hmm. um, but often, you know, anyone whose, you know, work you admire and they, they come from this creative place and you go, wow, what a unique solution or wow, that person is, I'm so attractive to what they have to offer because it's so authentic and it feels so real and grounded to me. And that doesn't come from the place of the mind. 
That comes from them dropping into that winter, that creative space, that quiet, non-external focused um, relationship with the somatic body, with its integration into the physical world. And I think often that's why words fail us. I mean, even as I'm describing now, I think things that are really, really true words do those the least amount of justice like it's Mm -hmm. just we do our best (laughs) to communicate things using language um but things that are inspiring things that that creative spark your motivation your knowing who you are that comes from a non-mental non-verbal place and so it's a great practice i probably the most fundamental practice as an entrepreneur if you're going to practice one thing, if you're going to walk away with one thing, dropping into that space, getting out of your head, maybe even getting outside into nature. Spring is the mm-hmm. best time to do that. Get up from your desk, go move around. But for a moment, don't look outside. Don't look at other people's things. Don't even look at your own work. Don't even look at your own prop. Like just drop into that quiet space and reintegrate with that and mm-hmm that's where a lot of these that's where a lot of your answers and your creative spark will come from Mm -hmm. absolutely and this brings me back to my five element days where we looked at organs as archetypes and the organs that are associated with the wood element are the liver and the gallbladder and I was thinking about this this morning as I was um, sort of in that like fuzzy space between sleep and, and wakefulness and was just going back to the yin yang roots of, okay, so if yin is intention and the holder of memory and the holder of um, purpose and yang is the mover, the protagonist, the... Um, the the hero in in these stories then each of these organ pairs that we find in in chinese medicine like mirrors that energy and so like with the liver and the gallbladder pairing the liver has so much to do like (laughs) like in the physical body the liver is directing so many processes it's involved in so many things it's yeah. also physically s- and metaphysically it's yeah. soup it has a lot of jobs <laughs> yeah yeah and so i think of the liver as being like the director you know as being like the one who oversees everything like is able to take that macrocosmic view and is like okay so we can delegate a lot of this and so let me do my piece and then let me delegate it's also the most flexible and the most resilient of the organs. And so again, that wood element is all about flexibility, that like that bendy bamboo, but the liver, like you can, I think like destroy 30% of the litter liver and it'll grow back. Um, which is Mm -hmm. quite fascinating in terms of like its regenerative properties. And so, um, So there's that flexibility piece that comes through with the liver. And if the liver's job is to take that macrocosmic view and, um, and to, to direct, then it's partner, the gallbladder energetically is about, okay, so let me take the microcosmic view and make sure that all these little steps are in place. Right. And, and so as you are entering into spring phase of your business, of um, whatever it is that you're doing, to be able to wear these two archetypes and and to be able to sort of like macrocosmic out and be like, okay, so how does this fit into my business world? How does this fit into the overall picture of Tao and, um, and purpose in my life? And then being able to microcosm in and embody the gallbladder and be like, how do I make those steps work for me? Mm-hmm. Right. And so, um, again, it's that, it's that clear balance. And I think that 
to speak to what you just shared of like, this is where I think authenticity comes in. Mm. Like authenticity cannot be faked. And, and I've been, you know, sort of in the social media space for a little while now and watching how people present themselves. And, um, when somebody is presenting themselves from an unbalanced feminine yin place versus an unbalanced masculine yin pl or yang place versus a balanced place like that comes through in everything that they do and so that's going to attract a different kind of person a different kind of audience member into their sphere it's going to affect the business decisions that they make it's going to affect how they take care of themselves and therefore have enough resources to be able to overflow that into their clients it's going to affect the relationship that they have um and not get entangled and enmeshed in codependency in their clients or with their business so again that sense of authenticity is something that is felt and reflected through the body mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and I think if you're an entrepreneur out there and you're building something new or you're revising something, um, it's okay if you're starting to feel overwhelmed or flustered, go back a step to your winter and reconnect with yourself. Um, it's okay to like dip back into another phase and that's why sometimes presenting these things as elements or archetypes or energies can help us maybe recognize things that are unseen and nebulous and somatic and hard to identify if you find that okay I know I'm in this new phase of, of building something new but I'm feel a bit directionless or I feel like I'm just copying other people because I don't quite know how to find my own voice or um, I'm not fueled with that spark that's just come out of you know listening for it uh, then that's okay that's a good sign okay take a step back into winter for a sec and we can do that anytime and 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 listen and, and reconnect and and maybe that's just you know it can be spring but or in any season you know you might you might be you know 10 years into a business and decide it's time for a spring clean and a revamp or you know it's so you can be you can use these energetics as tools anytime obviously you're gonna draw on them being super prevalent when it's that time of year if you live in a hemisphere where they're really prominent but um, but yeah it's okay to dip back and forth and probably really crucial and, and we all do that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I love that permission slip because mm -hmm. I think that oftentimes with our entrepreneurial space we are given this message that we just have to keep moving forward just keep putting one step in front of the other and springtime especially in Vancouver, I'm sure it happens in other places, but having lived in Vancouver through a couple of springs, it's like, it does this weird back and forth thing just naturally, <laughs> right? Yeah. It takes two steps forward into spring and then one step forward into winter. And then it's like three steps forward into spring and then five steps backwards into winter. I don't know, even just this year, y'all have had how many different little like weather patterns coming through like like every Floods, time I talk to snow yeah. <laughs> right yeah and, and so just like if, those weather patterns make you feel different you know those phases of your life I think is you know they're going to make you feel different I was in the interior in December and it was minus 23 degrees minus 24 degrees celsius I forget what that is Fahrenheit no especially with wind chill it's cold that's and you don't no. want to go, <laughs> you don't, I didn't want to go out and exercise. And, you know, there's, there's you feel really different in that environment. And mm -hmm. so um, that's true for the weather, but it's true for your internal weather. And it's true for your processes as well, yeah. too. And sorry, you were, yeah. um, no, but I you think saying that about you, the phases. Yeah, I think that that illustrates it beautifully, just in terms of like giving yourself a chance to, 
Like, it's okay to take a couple steps back into winter, especially as you're in this transition phase, moving into springtime, because nature does that naturally, you know, and you're going to feel differently. And we don't like, I don't know, like, it'd be futile to just get angry at nature. Like, that's not going to change the fact that you move backwards five steps into winter again. Like, we just have to sort of accept the space that you're in and dress mm-hmm. accordingly and move accordingly. Mm-hmm. And time and process. I think this is another thing that gets under uh, shown and undervalued in the entrepreneurial world is time and process does not get shown enough or maybe get enough value placed on it. We place mm-hmm. a lot of value on the fruit. But I was saying earlier, you know, if you you want that, if you want cherries in that cherry tree, and what you've got right now is the seed, you're not going to jump to cherries. Like you, there, there's, there's a natural process that you can't rush and you can't fake and you can't. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's good to be, to, to know where you are and, and, and make the most of where you are and heaven forbid, even jo- enjoy where you are. This is your yeah. life. I mean, you know, that, and and enjoy the fact that you're starting something new or you're wrapping up something old and making a change. Like, you know, what, what phase are you, are you in? And that frustration of trying to be somewhere where you're not is, Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's really quite draining. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And I think that when we take action for action's sake, like this is like, I, definitely fallen prey to these types of programs in the past. You know, I took a program um, a few years back that was, you know, make a six figure income in 12 weeks. And you know what, like it actually did do the thing that it promised. I had my first like 10 K month in that program, but because it wasn't rooted and grounded in intentionality, I have no idea where that money went. Like if you were to ask me (laughs) like today, like, where did that 10 K go? I, right. I cannot tell you where it went. And right. so moving through these phases with intention and, you know, at the right time means that, you know, I make 10 K fairly regularly now. And that money is directed in a way that is with intention and planning for the future and making sure that I'm leaving enough for the seeds that I want to plant next season. And, and so this is why I think trauma work is so, so important is because we think that we just want all the abundance and forget that with the abundance comes more triggers that we need to work with. And so Mm -hmm. instead of wasting all that time, money, energy that's spent, Um, without thought, without intention, can we get back into understanding, you know, like what does money represent for us? Mm -hmm. What does time represent for us? What does energy represent for us? And get Mm -hmm. really clear on that so that when the abundance does come, it can be directed in a way that you are acting as a conduit for that money as an energy to actually Mm -hmm. flow into things that are of value. And I think that's a struggle that I see in the way that capitalism works now is, yeah, there's a whole shit ton of money being generated, but it's feeding things like slow or it's feeding things like monocrop culture. It's feeding things like fast fashion. And Mm -hmm. so if we can intentionally receive money and intentionally allow money to flow out. Mm -hmm. I think that that's how we can participate in capitalism and make these really big changes, um, that we all want to see in the world, like instead Mm -hmm. of just complaining about it. And when you say that's really what business is, is an energy exchange, like at its foundational level, Mm -hmm. I mean, the business is, outflow and inflow Mm -hmm. and you get to decide what those you get to assign values also to those things like what um what is a value to you what is good compensation 
in a in an appropriate um, measure to uh, the amount you're going to exert. I mm-hmm. mean, that's that's sort of what business is. I produce something, I give something of myself, I contribute something, and then um, and I'm going to do that, but. I can only continue to do that if I also, in return, receive nourishment, if I receive replenishment, if I receive rest, if I receive resources to expand and build or restock or, yeah. and that, I mean, that, that kind of, you can see that on, on the money level, but it, you know, it really at its root, this is a very energetic endeavor that you're in. And if you can step back and sort of see it with those eyes again every once in a while and check in like what are my values what is of value to me what do Mm -hmm. I want to put out there what do I want to receive back I think saves a bit of this sort of blind scrambling where that you know vision quality of wood is a little impeded because oh it's like what what am I working for Mm -hmm. what you know and we all get into situations I think we've mentioned this in other podcasts where sometimes you know, you just have to take a job <laughs> right now because you're paying rent and you, mm-hmm. you know, you, or you're going to pull the all-nighter, um, not because you think that's a, you know, sustainable way to go for very long, but, you know, we, we consciously make can make those choices where it's like, okay, right now, that's, that over um, overflow is, is worth it for the moment, but yeah. it's only, you're yeah. only going to be able to say it. So it's okay to be in that place too, but in general, but again, with intentionality. With intentionality is yeah. is best, and then yeah. at some point you're going to have to look. Okay, where, what is it? Why am I spending my time doing this? And mm-hmm. I, I think that feeds into like the busy work that comes with entrepreneurship. Like, mm-hmm. if you're spending a ton of time and energy in on Instagram, and mm-hmm. that's not really where your where you're serving people or mm-hmm. where your clients come from, mm-hmm. or like why are you. Are you just feeling the pressure to be there or yeah. is that really worth it for you and your business? So even your business values, like where, where is it worth it to spend your time yeah. and money? And yeah. springtime is about, you know, growing new things. But again, with that vision, with that, that, you know, the art director has the vision of how the whole picture is going to turn out. And then mm-hmm. we call on the gallbladder and the, you know, say the, you know, the line artists who are going to create the cells of the animation and like they're gonna then that's how we see a film but you Mm -hmm. need both of those things you need the vision and you need the action but Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. also from that place of what you know we've checked in what do we want to create what are our values what do we want to receive yeah i think what this is bringing up for me is on my hard days um I have a tendency to go into this place of like scarcity of like what I do doesn't really matter. Mm. Like I am one person on this planet. The fact that I, you know, bought a sustainably and ethically made (laughs) tank top that cost me $48 versus just buying the $5 tank top from the gap, you know, like, is that really going to make a difference? And I am reminded of a story that producer Andre shared with me, which was, I don't know, I think he said in the eighties or nineties, like shrimp became like the new thing that everyone had to eat. (laughs) It was like, like all of a sudden people discovered that shrimp was delicious and it became the thing. (laughs) And so China ended up flooding their rice patties and filling them up with water so that they could grow shrimp for an international market that all of a sudden had this like booming demand. And for the first time in history, China had to import rice for their people. Right. Right. And, and so, yes, it can feel like you are the tiniest little droplet in this giant ocean and does what I do and do my intentions really matter but you forget that you are a tiny droplet in a sea of other tiny droplets. And Mm -hmm. if we can create this resonance with all the other tiny droplets, then we can create a movement that is aimed towards a more sustainable and ethically, you know, created world. And so for me, the reason why I want to teach this so 
deeply in my bones is because I think that there needs to be a revolution of spiritual entrepreneurs who are using themselves as a conduit so that your money is being spent in ways that is going to change our world for yeah. the next generation. It's not yeah. just about you making money. It's about these internal changes that happen so that you aren't looking at the world from a place of scarcity anymore and you aren't looking and making decisions from a place of reactivity and you're able to actually have responsiveness in how you receive money and also how you um, yes. allow money to flow out of you. Mm -hmm. And what you create. That's mm -hmm. so wonderful. And I think what you inspired in me too is... Um, how much your business is going to reflect you, whether you're conscious of it or not. Like you were saying, the kind of people who are attracting a certain audience or like you are going to, whether you, whether you consciously do it or not, you are going to resonate out and you are going to resonate with people and um, no matter what. So the, the more we take care of ourselves and the more we try to become intentional, then you get to ripple out those values that you have and I think it can become so overwhelming when we take those big picture views like exactly you know what does it matter if I recycle today when I just see you know ha you know all the plastic washing up on the beach and it's not you know it's not even mine and and it it's all that really matters and I have to constantly remind myself this too when I start feeling like, oh, I've got to do all these things and, the, you know, I get too intern externally focused is you just have to just start, just start with yourself. And that's actually the least selfish thing you can do yeah. is just start with yourself. How do I want to show up for myself today? Mm -hmm. How do I want to take care of myself? How do I want to commit to those values that I thought were important to me? Yeah. And you just don't try to solve the big thing. Um, but the only way to solve the big thing is many people doing the little things. So yeah. just yeah. keep it simple. <laughs> yeah. And the thing is that when you do focus in on yourself, like Christina is saying, what happens is the medicine and the service that you are meant to share with the world is given a, a free path to move forward. You know, that's what I'm seeing so much in, in my clients right now is it's like, if we take those blocks and those barriers out, then think about how your energy ripples out into your community. What kind of shifts you can make in, you know, the dozens of clients, the hundreds of clients that you are going to support this year. And then how did they ripple out their medicine and their energy, right? And so this is how you as a tiny droplet resonating at a certain frequency actually can make a difference and a change in this big tide that is hopefully shifting towards more things that are based around sustainability and ethics and intentionality. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And for anyone who is uh, in the spring of their career, uh, it's okay to be the newbie and don't let that um, keep you from being too afraid of the value you have to offer. I'm just, you, what you said just reminded me of being at the beginning. I don't know if you mm -hmm. felt this way, the beginning of our acupuncture practice. And I remember starting on, you know, at the beginning of, of my first year in acupuncture and having my first patients and just being really conscious about the thought came to me like, oh, five years to now, from now, I'm going to know, I know I'm going to know so much more than I do now. Like I had a great foundation. I, you know, we did our clinical hours, but it's like, I know that I'm going to know more than I do now, five years from now. Should I be treating these patients if I'm not going to offer them now? Is there value mm. in me starting now versus I know I'm going to know more five years from now? Yeah. And um, I'd say don't let that fear overwhelm you if you're starting something new because um, just just really offering things authentically. I mean, I had fantastic results in my first year of practice and, you know, acupuncture is not just about results. <laughs> but you, if you're, 
if you're really inspired to offer something, it's okay if you're just a beginner. You've probably put more thought and effort and time into it than someone who is coming to seek your services or your products. Yeah. They aren't the artist. They aren't the doctor. They aren't the whatever it is. And yeah. so um, I think in, in, the the in this theme of spring, um, don't be afraid also to be new. Don't let that impede your growth. You know, just start start small start with yourself and start sharing and then see what happens and that's how you nourish the tree that's how the acorn becomes the oak it's time it's you know some energy it's time it's cultivation and all of those stages are very very valuable not just mm -hmm. the end mm -hmm. well i don't know that i could wrap that up any more beautifully than you just did so spring, I, spring. <laughs> <laughs> we need glitter rainbow hands but <laughs> like reading rainbow like spring yeah. <laughs> well my love hey i'm so excited about this series i'm planning yeah. on putting them out um for each equinox and solstice and so this is going to be right before the spring equinox. And so folks, if this is interesting to you, then you're in luck because Christine is <laughs> going to be here at least four more times this year. That's right. That's yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. And I have awesome. a tendency, like when I'm mulling over something and I'm uh, like a processor through conversation, uh, so if I'm mulling something over, I will probably ask Christina to come back on and help me just <laughs> put that into the world as well. So I say minimum of four more times because that's probably true. Um, who knows? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, thank you for carving out this space. And I think it, I agree. I think it's going to be really fun. This is a conversation in the business and entrepreneurial world that I, I don't really, I haven't really seen much of. I know, uh, I keep hearing I'd love that. I know if there's more out there, but yeah, um, yeah it's unfortunate this little phase, this little um, way to use those resources maybe, maybe has been missed a little bit. So yeah. um, I'm really excited um, if we can, can share and, and fill in a little bit um, yeah. of, of that wonderful wisdom. Yeah. So folks, Christine has already been on the podcast a bunch of times, so uh, you can go back and I'll link all those episodes into the show notes so you can just listen to the archives. Um, we've done a seasonal conversation all of last year for each of the seasons, and she's done a couple of little like extras here and there. Mm -hmm. And I will link all of the ways that you can find Christina in the show notes as well. <laughs> So if you like her, which I'm sure you do, because, yeah, she's wonderful. <laughs> Go find her. Yeah, and we'll, uh, we'll do this again in the summer. Yep. Thank you so much. 